So The Ordinary has some new skincare products that yours truly has been trying out over the past several months. Let's start out with their new Aloe 2% plus NAG or NAG 2% solution. NAG N-acetyl glucosamine is an amino sugar. It's thought to be a precursor to hyaluronic acid. It's hydrating. Industry studies suggest that it can help diminish the appearance of fine lines around the eyes. Allegedly, it also may help in improving hyperpigmentation by inhibiting tyrosinase. An industry study using 2% N-acetylglucosamine in combination with niacinamide did show an improvement in dark spots, but more research is definitely needed to know to what extent, if any, this particular ingredient is useful in a skincare routine. Aloe, it's a really popular ingredient. Aloe actually has compounds in it called allicins that may help with hyperpigmentation. Then there's a peptide, palmitoyl pentapeptide 4. This is a subfragment of type 1 collagen. Now, you have to take peptide studies with a grain of salt. They are industry studies. Allegedly, this compound was comparable to 0.07% retinol in improving the appearance of wrinkles with less irritation. Now, you guys know when it comes to peptides, by and large, I believe they work as humectants, improving the moisture content in the skin. To what extent they actually get into your skin and elicit these biologic pathways remains to be determined. Is this any better than just a regular hydrating ingredient like hyaluronic acid or glycerin? Hard to say. This also has lactic acid and alpha hydroxy acid that's hydrating and can help soften and improve dull skin texture. What does the ordinary claim this particular product is going to do for you? It claims it's going to improve the look of textural irregularities, uneven skin tone, and redness. Their marketing also suggests that this particular serum may, the marketing also suggests that this serum is going to reduce the appearance of post-acne marks. Post-acne marks could be either hyperpigmentation or redness. It suggests it's going to reduce the appearance of pores, boost hydration, and strengthen the skin barrier. All right, so I've been using this consistently one to two times a day. And I have to tell you guys, I really have not noticed much from this product. I was expecting to get a skin brightening effect with this. Check out my recent video on skin brightening versus skin lightening, but I don't have any existing dark spots or existing red spots that I was expecting this product to target. Instead, I thought, well, for me, maybe this will improve skin texture and overall the clarity of my skin. Overall, I'm very skeptical of this product, not because it's problematic or the ingredients I think are hard harmful per se. I just am not really sure it is offering the consumer that much above and beyond some of the other serums in The Ordinary's portfolio for which the ingredients are a lot more evidence-based. I think it's interesting with this particular serum, it's marketed around 2% NAG mostly, um, but the studies on this particular ingredient are usually paired with niacinamide. And I find it interesting that they chose to leave out niacinamide. I, now, I know a lot of you guys are probably elated that there's no niacinamide in this because a subset of people do find niacinamide very irritating. And it is in a lot of skincare products. So I can kind of see why they left it out. I mean, they need to come up with something that's gonna stand out amidst the sea of things that already exist. And we have so many niacinamide serums out there that I can see perhaps maybe that is why they left it out for people who are sensitive or just too do not basically make yet another niacinamide serum. But with this particular ingredient, it seems as though the research that we do have, albeit industry studies, seems to suggest that when paired with niacinamide, that's when you get the results. So to what extent the ingredient by itself is offering much beyond improving hydration? It did say that it was going to diminish the appearance of pores. Now, I'm not particularly bothered by the appearance of my pores, but I have used many hydrating serums, toners, skincare products over the years, and I definitely have noted with certain products a skin plumping effect that very nicely diminishes the appearance of the pores on my nose. I did not get this with this particular product. So for me, I was underwhelmed by the performance of this. I did not really see an improvement in skin clarity, nor skin texture, nor skin hydration, firmness, suppleness. I don't have any post-acne dark marks or post-acne redness. I'm still skeptical though, because ingredients that can help with those things are not present in this that are well-researched. Now, as far as the texture and the performance, it's easy to apply. You don't need very much of it, just like three drops. It spreads on the skin very easily, so you can get a thin film to the skin of the face and 
the neck. So it should last a good long while. Cost $14.50 for 30 ml. And this is good within 12 months of opening. Let's move over though to their new multi-peptide eye serum. When it comes to just moisturizing the skin around your eyelids, you're fine to just use whatever facial moisturizer you're using. However, there are skincare products specifically for the eye that have ingredients that aim to address the unique needs surrounding the eye in terms of wrinkles, fine lines, dark circles, puffiness, under eye bags, and they're formulated specifically for the delicate skin of the eye. And that's really what the serum is. It has some peptides, some ingredients. So let's talk about what is in this. Like the facial serum, it has acetyl glucosamine in it, a hydrating ingredient. This, unlike that, does have niacinamide, one of my favorite ingredients if you tolerate it. It's helpful for hyperpigmentation, redness. It's good for the moisture barrier. This has caffeine. Now caffeine absorbs into the skin very readily and it can constrict the blood vessels, helping to reduce puffiness. And ultimately that has a brightening effect for the under eye and then it pushes the fluid away and it can help improve the appearance of some types of dark under eye circles and some types of under eye bags. This also has an antioxidant, epigallocatechin galatiol glucoside, presumably modified for better skin penetration, but this is EGCG, comes from green tea and ha that particular antioxidant has been shown to help reduce the burden of sun damage when the skin is exposed to ultraviolet radiation. Palmitoyl tripeptide 38. Now, if you watched my recent video talking about the road skin lip mask, lip balm, and I, I compared it to the Polish Choice peptide plus HA lip booster, the Polish Choice product you'll recall has this peptide. The manufacturer of this peptide claims it's going to boost six different proteins in your skin. They have in vitro studies, meaning cells on a dish with this peptide showing that it improves levels of collagen one, collagen two, collagen four, fibronectin, hyaluronic acid, and laminin five. Now that is all done in cells in a dish, not actual human skin, but they have done a study on female volunteers using 2% strength of this peptide. And the women in the study reported a decrease in wrinkles. But again, if this particular peptide is just working as a humectant, that shouldn't surprise anyone. Humectants help diminish the appearance of wrinkles, but do you actually need an expensive peptide to do that? This also has acetyl tetrapeptide 5. This is a four amino acid peptide that allegedly is going to help improve the appearance of puffy eyes. Allegedly, the peptide has anti-edema effects. Allegedly, this peptide has a decongesting effect that's going to presumably push fluid out from the delicate under eye skin to brighten up the under eye area. When human volunteers use this peptide daily for 15 days, 70% showed an improvement in the appearance of the skin around the eyes. And by 60 days, 95% of users were singing the praises of what this did for the appearance of their, their wrinkles around the eyes. Then there is Miristoil Nonapeptide 3. This allegedly mimics the effects of retinol without the side effects of retinol. So retinol can help improve skin cell turnover. And of course, with long-term use, it can improve collagen production. Now the manufacturer is making this claim based on what is called a gene array. And they compared it to retinoic acid. Retinoic acid lit up 21 of the 92 genes that they looked at, uh, whereas this Maristoil known peptide 3 lit up 16 of the 92. Then they did what's called an ex vivo test. So not just cells in a dish, but actual human skin no longer on a human. And uh, they did a 10% cream with this peptide, and they showed that in the explanted skin, there was a 43% increase in collagen 1. In comparison, 0.1% retinoic acid acid, there was a 50% increase in collagen. They also showed in these explant studies an increase in cell turnover. However, retinoic acid was superior to the peptide in that regard. Uh, there are no actual studies on human people to see how this peptide performs, but the manufacturer claims based on these studies that it's going to act like retinol, which is kind of a leap. More research is definitely needed to say that for sure. But what does the ordinary claim this is going to do? It claims it's going to target the appearance of common signs of aging around the eyes including reducing the appearance of crow's feet, reducing the appearance of under eye wrinkles, and reducing the appearance of eye bags, puffiness, and dark circles. My experience using this serum, it actually does have a subtle depuffing effect and a subtle um, effect on improving the appearance of dark circles. I'm gonna show you here, this is me first thing in the morning. You can see what my under eye area looks like. I'm gonna put a little bit on and just give it a few minutes and you can kind of see there is a little bit of a subtle depuffing effect after it's been sitting on there a few minutes. Now remember, this has caffeine, which absorbs into the skin pretty easily, pretty quickly, especially around delicate under
under eye scan, and it can help constrict the blood vessels and just push excess fluid away from that area, depuffing and brightening up that area. So I, I definitely find that this product works in that regard. However, I, I feel like we have to put a lot of faith in all of these other peptides. Like, are they really bringing something to the table in the serum? In my opinion, it doesn't offer much, at least in terms of performance and results that I am seeing. Again, everyone's skin is different. The results I'm seeing are no different than when I use their caffeine plus EGCGI serum. This particular serum is more expensive and they justify the price point on their website specifically by saying, well, you know, we've put these peptides in at a, a higher concentration and, and therefore, you know, it's, they're more, it's more costly to formulate. So that makes sense that it's gonna cost more, but is that, but, but are those things worth it for you? Or is it really bringing a whole lot extra to the table above and beyond what their caffeine plus EGCG serum already offers? In my experience, no. As far as the performance of this product and the texture and consistency, it's very thin. You honestly do not need very much at all. In fact, the product itself is good within six months of opening. And I question, am I actually gonna go through all of this within six months? Because you will see how easily it spreads with just like, like less than a rice grain's worth all around the eye area. And one thing I found, you definitely don't wanna overuse this. You don't wanna to use too much because one thing I found is that um, it will end up migrating into your eyes uh, and it makes the eyes burn. I don't know if it's the niacinamide and or the caffeine or the combination of the two, but you have to be careful in that regard. It will, if you use too much, you'll end up getting in your eyes and it's not pleasant. Okay, let's talk about their new cleansers. The glycolipid cream cleanser has glycolipids, which are helpful for the moisture barrier. It has phytic acid, which is an antioxidant that also can mildly exfoliate the skin. This is a cream cleanser that you can apply to dry or damp skin. And I have to tell you guys, I have been rather impressed with the performance of this. If you have very sensitive, irritated skin, you are, maybe you're using Accutane and you're, you want the mildest, gentlest products. This is a very, very, very mild, gentle, creamy, soothing, frankly, cleanser that actually does a good job removing cosmetics. It may not be the best at removing water resistant sunscreen. You may need to use an oil cleanser first, but for me, I was able to get mascara that is not waterproof. That's important. Mascara, eyeshadow, non-water resistant sunscreen off with just this, applying it all over to a dry face. And then when I get in the shower, rinsing it off with no additional cleanser, I got all of that off. I haven't necessarily tried it though with a water water resistant sunscreen. You guys know those can be a bit more tenacious, which is a good thing. We want them to stay on, but it can make them you know, harder to remove. So I actually really, really like this cleanser. It's fragrance free. It has kind of a coconutty aroma to it. It kind of reminds me almost like a liquid, a more liquid version of a cold cream. $12.50 for the 150 ml tube. The glucoside foaming cleanser, is also $12.50 for the 150 ml tubes. Now this comes out as a gel and it lathers into a foam. I have nothing good or bad to say about this. It works as a foaming cleanser. Now, in contrast to the glycolipid cream cleanser, with this, I was not able to let to use it by itself to remove eyeshadow and mascara. Like if I tried to just use this, it would leave raccoon eyes. So I did need to use an oil cleanser or cleansing balm first to remove my makeup and my non-water resistant sunscreen. Um, you apply this to a wet face. It's like a traditional foaming cleanser. It's very boring. And y'all know, I like boring skincare. I like bland, basic, no nonsense. It works, it gets the job done. But if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, this new cleanser, is it gonna be like this wonderful experience? I think you'll be let down a bit. It's, it's just very, it gets the job done, but it's not anything to write home about. Now, they have two new moisturizers. Uh, you guys know that for years they've had the NMA, the Natural Moisturizing Factors Plus HA Moisturizer. They've stepped it up to two additional moisturizers. Natural Moisturizing Factor Plus Beta Glucan. Now, this is marketed for people who have oily to combination skin. It comes out as a clear, colorless gel. It has urea, which you all know is one of my favorite ingredients in moisturizers. It can soften, dry, dull, 
rough texture. It's great if you have keratosis pilaris, and it is hydrating. It is part of your skin's natural moisturizing factors. This also has hyaluronic acid. It has a variety of amino acids, and as its namesake implies, it has beta-glucan, which is rich in antioxidants and is very hydrating. This also has ceramides in it, which are good for the skin barrier. It's fragrance-free. Cut to the chase. This is not it. I was really uh, hoping this would be a good moisturizer to recommend to people who have oily skin and just want something super light. Yes, it is super light, but it leaves the skin feeling filmy and almost drier than it did to begin with. I don't have dry skin. I don't have oily skin. Um, I don't have combination skin. I'm just kind of like right in the middle. I have the same level of hydration all over my skin. When I wash my face, if I don't put a moisturizer on, the skin will feel a little dry and uncomfortable. So putting this on to the skin while it's still damp after cleansing, for me, once it absorbs in, which doesn't take long, my skin feels like I didn't put any moisturizer on. It feels dry and filmy. Last week, I reviewed for you guys the uh, new products from CeraVe, and they have this ultra light moisturizer, which I was not impressed with either, but that product product performs much better in comparison to this, objectively speaking. Moving on to the NMF plus phytoceramides. This has likewise urea and it has ceramides again, which are good for the moisture barrier. Um, this has allegedly four times more emollients than their natural moisturizing factor plus HA moisturizer and two times more humectants. And you really can appreciate a difference in the texture, the consistency and the performance of this moisturizer in comparison to the original NMF plus plus HA. It is a lot more emollient. In fact, it looks and feels like sunscreen. It's very shiny and very emollient. And it's, it's, it's really good if you have uh, dry, irritated, dermatitic skin. You want something that is very occlusive and is going to help reduce water loss. This actually really does make you look like a glazed donut. It's good. It, it's good. If you have oily skin, you may find this is uncomfortable. You may not like it. It may look you, make you look oilier, shinier. If you put it on in the morning and try and put sunscreen on over it, I suspect many sunscreen formulations will pill going on over this because it is so emollient. But overall, I really like it. It is on the heavier side. And if you have rosacea, sometimes heavy moisturizers, they actually can make you feel a bit overheated and precipitate a flush of redness. So you may not care for it in that regard, in which case you may want to stick to their original NMF plus HA. So amongst the three moisturizers in their portfolio, I still really love the NMF plus HA. I would say the NMF plus phytoceramides is a great addition to their portfolio for offering something that when you need like extra barrier support, especially as a, you know, seeking a rich night cream, I think this is nice. The NMF plus beta-glucan, it, it really is not bringing much to the table and it left my skin feeling drier. All right, y'all, those are the new products that I've tried out from The Ordinary. Let me know if you have tried any of these, what your experience was. I also plan to review their multi-peptide serum for hair density, so make sure you stay tuned for that video. It should be coming maybe this week if if I get my act together. So stay tuned for that if that is something of interest to you. On the end slate, I'm actually going to link my recent review of the new CeraVe product. So check that out if you are intrigued by anything that's new from CeraVe. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.